good evening uh, students and my respected colleagues well uh, this is uh, uh the the pattern of presentation is similar to what i have been propagating that the student at of conceptual orthopedics app should get an experience as if he is working in a live orthopedic unit uh the case comes to the opd he is examined by the postgraduate student he discusses it with the with his guide or with the faculty members or with the senior residents as the case may be and thereafter a clinical diagnosis is formed some investigations relevant investigations are ordered and they are they also part of they become part of additional data collected to be analyzed and then we reach a diagnosis and once a diagnosis has been reached the student also continues to follow up this patient either the management is conservative or an operative management and in case the management is operative then he gets to assist in that particular case so that he learns the nuances of surgical treatment of the, a given case and thereafter he also gets to follow up the case in the outpatient department for a reasonably long time well this particular case which we discussed a few weeks ago uh happens to be a case of a swelling in the volar aspect of the wrist and just to recapitulate briefly what we discussed in that particular session i would like to remind you that this patient that we are talking about was a 30 year old man with a swelling on the left wrist the left dominant hand the swelling was there for 8 months duration according to the patient started initially to be the size of a pea and gradually progressed to its present size well this was the presentation and uh this is the what we discussed that the swelling was on the on the medial border of the swelling there were two tendons and these tendons happen to be the flexor carpi radialis and on the further ulnar words was the palmaris longus so flexor carpi radialis and palmaris longus were the medial boundary or the medial extent of this swelling which was the size of a uh, a raspberry at this stage started as a size of the pea but reached the size of a raspberry now and on the on the on the radial side we had another prominent tendon which we decided was the abductor pollicis longus tendon so this was the presentation and we further dwelled on it and we this we also talked about that this swelling was apparently intruding into the palm and this was uh, further uh, highlighted in the other view which we took from the ulnar side and uh, in this view we 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 did see a crust formation which probably was the site of a possible aspiration which had been performed before this patient presented to us and this is the view from the ulnar side which also tells us that there was extension into the palm intruding into the thinner eminence of this particular patient so this these were the salient features and on palpation we were able to demonstrate 
uh, obvious fluctuation. So this was a cystic swelling in effect. And the, the swelling itself was mobile. The, the skin over the swelling could be pinched, meaning thereby that the skin was not adherent to the underlying swelling. And on further uh, scrutiny, we found that the swelling itself was mobile. The swelling was frankly mobile, both in the horizontal as well as the vertical planes. Uh, the next question usually, as Dr. Dimri pointed out right in the beginning, is that one needs to decide what is the actual plane of the swelling. Now, this swelling, though it appears to be subcutaneous, but we need to decide whether it is fixed to the underlying structures or not. And for, th for that, we demonstrated that on clenching the fist, making the tendon start, there was no change in the mobility of the swelling. So it was presumed that it is not fixed to the underlying structures. Uh, what happens to the dimension of the swelling when we attempt to move the wrist? And this may give us a clue to whether the swelling is communicating with the wrist joint or not. So this is what we found was that on armor flexion, the swelling became a little less prominent, but on dorsiflexion, the swelling was definitely much more prominent than it was in the neutral position. So this gives us a clue that there may be some communication with the wrist joint in this particular swelling. Well, to move further, on measurement, the swelling was found to be three centimeters long and two centimeters wide. So these, these were the dimensions and we summarized the findings by saying that it was a spontaneously appearing, solitary, slow growing, normothermic, non-tender, three centimeter by two centimeter, well demarcated, firm, mobile, fluctuant swelling. In the subcutaneous plane, without any distal neurovascular deficit. And based on these findings, we discussed the possible clinical diagnosis and we entertained the diagnosis of it being a ganglion uh, on, the dor on the volar aspect, volar and radial aspect of the wrist. The differential diagnosis considered were flexor carpe radialis tenosynovitis uh, as one of the possibilities. Uh, we also uh, discussed the possibility of radial artery pseudoaneurysm, but for the simple reason that this was not pulsatile and also it, it, uh, a vascular malformation was discussed, but this swelling was not reducible. So the differential diagnosis of radial artery pseudoaneurysm and vascular malformation were remote possibilities, but these were the differential diagnosis. Well, with this, we also discussed uh, the management and we reached to the consensus that uh, the best treatment which would ensure minimum chances of recurrence of this swelling would be a surgical excision of the swelling. Well, friends, I must write in the beginning because now the recap is over and we are moving to the today's discussion or exposition of the surgical management of this particular patient. And right in the beginning, uh, I would 
like to emphasize that a ganglion of the wrist, whether it is dorsal or ventral, there is a tendency on the part of the treating surgeon to consider it as an extremely minor surgical procedure. And I have at times seen that it is delegated to the end of the wrist and uh, to the end of the list, operating list, and it is delegated to the junior most member of the team with the instructions that go ahead and perform this surgery under local anesthesia. 